Hey gang, we're in Santa Barbara today. We are actually at the Mission Santa Barbara. Goes way back to the early 1800s and we're gonna walk through this whole thing. Remember, if you've seen the live stream that I did this last Sunday, we were talking about Juana Maria, the lone woman. And I was telling you a little bit about her story. Well, this is where she's buried in the cemetery here. So we're gonna take a walk and I will give you a little bit of the history of the church and the times and everything that went on here. Now, if you go back in history, the Spanish were making claims to California, of course, Alta California, which is not the borders we have today. It went way inland and it was much bigger. And they came and of course the indigenous tribes were made to become good Spanish citizens. And in that, they had to learn the language, they had to convert to Christianity. And in this area here, we had the, a tribe called the Chumash, Chumash Barbarino, if I'm pronouncing that right. And of course, religious conversion really means servitude in those days which basically is slavery. Now the name here, the namesake Santa Barbara was from a girl who was from the tribe who was beheaded by her father. She had converted to Christianity. He did not like that. So he beheaded her. Look at the rose window. Now we're gonna go in the church. We're gonna see and if you look way up there, there's a little bit of Roman architecture, Roman Catholic, right? Let's look at some of the details. Now this church was rebuilt back in the 50s. Actually going back originally, there were three missions here. Started with a, a little chapel and then a bigger chapel and then a larger chapel. And then in 1812, there was an earthquake which destroyed that last chapel on December 21st of 1812. And by the time 1820 came, they had the fourth chapel here, which I believe resembled this chapel. And it was built with what was called, and we talked about this before, the architect, and, Wheel. <laughs> I'm an architect, you know, I love buttresses and not butts, buttresses. And this is what's called a buttress that basically holds, it stabilizes the wall system from the exterior. And that is so you could have very large expanses inside without columns, column free space, because the roof forces are pushing the top of the outside walls out so the buttresses are here to counteract those structural forces. Now, this is the only reason this church, while the outer walls did survive to some degree, and you can see the bell towers, massive bells up there. We had an earthquake in 1925 on July 29th, 1925, and because of these buttresses, the walls were held intact, but it really had to be heavily rebuilt. Now, they found in the last century that the concrete foundations were disintegrating. So in 1950 to 53, they had to tear this down, the towers, the facade, and they had to rebuild it. It is rebuilt in the exact way that it was but it is not original. But the church interior we're going to take a look at is pretty much original. And here you see the mission, the traditional architecture we see out here, Spanish missionary. Now there's a fountain here. There's a couple of things that are original. And one is this fountain. And this is where they would come to wash and 
get their clothes. So this is original and check out the, the fountain. Looks like it's made of cement. And here I think is most interesting is where they would do this aqueduct. This, this is where they would wash the clothes. It was called a lavenderia and it was a washing basin. This was from 1818 and this did serve as the laundry. They soaked the clothes on the sloping sides here. They rinsed them in the center pool and it's all original. Beautiful. Well, let's, let's go inside and let's look around. So if you come here, you have the mission, the church, and on the other side of the church over there is the cemetery. And of course, we're gonna end at the cemetery and we're gonna see Joanna's grave. They say she is resting under the plaque. I, I, if, I feel like there's some conflict there, whether she's buried somewhere in the cemetery unmarked or at the plaque, but we'll, uh, we'll take a look. So let's go inside. But no, I didn't personally. Two adults, please. Now, first thing you see here is this amazing painting. That looks like Christ, right? Maybe after the crucifixion, I'm not sure. I'll zoom in on that for you. And as you look at the floors, I'm sure a lot of this is original. Look at the wrought iron surrounding the windows. Now, one thing I want to show you in particular as we pass through this vestibule, look at this garden, the fountain in the center. Is there is a room called, I believe it's called the Adobe Room. And they have some pictures of St. Nicholas, St. Nicholas Island that you can see. right in here. Right over here. Now San Nicolas Island is way out, triangulating way past Catalina Island between here to the north and the islands, it's way, way out there. And the there was a tribe called the Nicolina who lived here on this island for probably hundreds, if not thousands of years. And here is a shot of the island, a photograph. Looks like some traditional dress. And this is what I wanted to show you, is there's a little overview of the lone woman of San Nicolas Island. Some artwork here. And they say this is her picture, but I do not think it is her. And the reason I say that is, I think she was in her 50s or 60s when she came here to Santa Barbara, as it says here. And they say here, do you think this is the lone woman? And this woman looks like she's in her late 20s or 30s, wouldn't you say? Again, as I referenced when we were doing the live stream about the book by Scott O'Dell, Island of the Blue Dolphins. Let's continue. We'll go to the museum next. We're not gonna hit everything, but I'll show you a few things in here that I thought were interesting and spooky. Here are some statues, not spooky yet, but I'm gonna show you something that's terrifying to me. These statues were outside 
And it, they were on the pediments. These are the originals, I believe. Woman with a baby. Roman dress looks like the padre or priest, head priest. A woman. Here's what I want to show you right up here, guys. This is just, remember Michael the Archangel? Here is a version of Michael the Archangel. Look at that. And this, I believe, is original. That is very spooky to me. And here, of course, stepping on Satan. You see there, Michael the Archangel, it's written right there. And he is, looks like a fish with a tail. It's not a snake. But a very, very intriguing statue, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I don't know. Those faces, for me, uh, they're, they, they're spooky. <laughs> now, I'll, I'll show you this is interesting, too. This is a rendition. This might be original of how they would cook and eat. Now, I'll tell you what. Look at the, the beams with the cornice. Not cornice, with those uh, support members. And I'm guessing that's the original. The original bricks. Now look at that. Presumably the fires would be down there, right? Yeah. All right, let's look at a couple of other things before we make our way out to the church. We'll go through the church and the cemetery. There's one other thing I wanted to show you of some relics from the original church. You can see the original pews or, or chairs, benches. But what I thought was very intriguing was this book for the music. Fabric pages under plexiglass. And I'm gonna tell you it's about 30 inches high by about mm, 50 inches wide. So a lot of relics here, if you come here. All right, let's go out and let's look at the church. A lot of people here, candles. Here are some artifacts, some old beams it looks like. Stones. Let's go into the church. So we gotta be quiet in here. Now most of this is original. Not a lot has changed, so they say. It's beautiful in here. Let's go to the altar. And this is the sanctuary. Still used today. The fresco. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Of course, the, the many steps, the crucifixion, as we see in most Christian Catholic churches. It's beautiful artwork, priceless stuff, probably.
Of course, the pews are probably 20th century. All right, let's go out through this. Let's go to the cemetery. So if you come through the church here, there's a small cemetery, or I guess it would be a graveyard. Typically, we call these graveyards. And there are mausoleums here and vaults. So let's take a look at a few of those, and then we'll end at, at uh, her grave. Father and mother. So I don't see dates here. Here's an 1859 date. Jose Ramon Malo, 47 years old. And of course he's in there. This looks like a single person, single person vault. This is the back of the vault or mausoleum, if you will. Now this is more of a mausoleum here. These are family mausoleums. As we see, look at the detailing on the, the eave of the roof. Marble, beautiful marble, it looks like. And look at this tree. Uh, you know me, guys, I'm always talking about the trees. How old, uh, anybody want to venture to guess how old this tree is? Certainly was here when the mission was built, right? Ricard? Lots of names there. I see Father, Mayor, Judge, and Gentleman, John T. Ricard, died in Santa Barbara, May 18th, 2000. So this is fairly recent. Interesting. They're still taking people here, but probably just very important people. Morena family. This is Maria and Arturo. Arturo, Arturo, and they passed, he passed June 18th, on June 18th, 1936, and yeah, Maria, oh, in 1988, native, yeah, it says native of Boston, Spain, Boston, not Boston, Boston, it's a large, Crucifix. Actually, look at that. That looks almost to scale. Just a little smaller than life size. Oh my gosh, look at this wrought iron. This is remarkable. And I've seen a lot of it. We've seen a lot of it on the channel, but this is some heavy duty stuff here, guys. Daniel Hill. And I think it says a native of Villarica, Massachusetts, and residents of California since 1823 died at this place the 25th January 1865, 68 years old. Wow, look at this gate. It is absolutely massive. And I'll give you an up close detail of the top of the, one of the posts here. Well, in this climate here, that's going to last a pretty long time. This is Coverubius. Coverubius, some beautiful brass, bronze, bronze doors. There's a crypt over there. And some more over here. There's an open one, unoccupied, I assume. Look at that, it has a window too. This might be a grotto of some sort. Not sure, but there is a hole down there that goes way, way down. 
and that might be the crypt. I don't know. Very interesting. What do you guys think? What do you think about that? Yeah, I've, we've never seen, I've never seen anything like that. Modern mausoleum. This is Peshine, O-R-D, Ward. O-R-D, that's O'Hare Airport. <laughs> the symbol for. Yeah, we've got some in the middle here. With a sundial. Look at that. I'm sure that's not original, but pretty interesting. Said erected 1927. Let's look at some of the architecture here. The clay tile roofs. Now here you see the buttresses. This is again what I was talking about. These again support the interior wall so you can have the roof forces are pushing out of course and those counteract those forces. Now, when you're in Europe, you know, like cathedrals, Notre Dame, they have what's called flying buttresses. And basically the flying buttress is the same concept but they come out much further and then the interior, they're actually, they come all the way out. They're like curved, many of them. They're, some are like this. But the interior is cut out because that's a non-structural element. It's not, it's not really helping anything. And I think it's partly decorative why they would take that out. But in many cases, in structural elements, you would take these things out. You ever see like old airplanes, World War II airplanes? You see the metal inside and um, uh, there's like circular holes cut out, and that's to remove weight because it's non-essential structural part of that, like uh, beams or in architecture, space frames. Uh, those uh, grid systems, giant joists that support glass and other things. You take all the weight out by taking the non-structural structural portions of the element out. So that's why they do that. Now, interesting. Right in the side of the church here, we have people buried. Tomasa Burton passed in 19, 1851, 1830-1851. And he's 20 years old. He's August to April, did not make the 21st birthday. Look at this brickwork here. Now this might be original. I'm going to tell you again. A lot, some of the stuff survived, but most of it was rebuilt. But this does. This to me looks original. And all right, we are arriving at her grave right here. Juana Maria. So there's a plaque here. Look at this window, by the way. How oh, neat. This is in the museum. Look at how that's all arched, or uh, the circular concave. It's like a portal. So here is the plaque, and it's for Juana Maria. Now again, I they say she's buried here. They said up front, She's buried right here, but what I, from what I've seen, she's buried. It's unidentified. She could be anywhere in here. But the plaque says, "Indian woman abandoned on San Nicolas Island, 18 years, found and brought to Santa Barbara by Captain George Nidever." And he's the French trader I was talking about in 1853. So as I was telling you guys, when we were doing the live stream, if you go all the way back in 1811, these Alaskan hunters came to the island and this, this tribe, the Nicolina tribe, they could have been living there for hundreds, probably thousands of years maybe. 
coming across on canoes. So in 1811, Alaskan hunters came. And of course the conflict and the conflict, they killed a good part of the tribe. So in 1835, the Mission Padres here from this, this order, they came and they moved them. They ordered them to move to the mainland for survival, but they forgot one woman and that was her, Juana Maria. And as it says here, she lived there for 18 years. The fur trappers came, they landed, they found her, they took her here to Santa Barbara. They were, she was baptized here, Juana Maria by the Padres. And within a few weeks, she got illness, you know, typical exposure, Europeans. And we don't know what disease, but she died. So she's buried here in an unmarked grave. They say she was the last survivor, last member of the Nicolina tribe. So go by the book. It'd be probably pretty interesting to read. So here we, here, that's it guys. I, I would say that's the better part of the tour. And I was really most interested to come and see her grave and well at least we know she's here somewhere so I highly recommend coming here enjoying Santa Barbara obviously we've got some great weather so everybody take care we'll see you on the next one